uh, homosexuality is not about love, it's not about family, it's not about civil rights, it's about sex. And these folks are trying to impose a, an abnormal lifestyle upon America. And it's okay for them to be gay if they want, as long as they do it in private, in privacy of their own home. But when they try to impose it upon us, we have a problem with that. And that has to stop. Jesus is coming back! And he's not coming back to die on the cross, my friends! Jesus Christ is coming back to judge the world! Obama is of the devil! Obama supports homosexuality! Obama supports abortion! Abortion! He is the shedding of innocent blood! Hey, but does, uh, does Chicka Phil make a good sandwich or not? Wait! I'm going to eat here right after this! Come on, Christians! Support Chick-fil-A! Leviticus 18.22 do not practice homosexuality. Having sex with another man as with a woman is a detestable sin. Hi YouTubers, over here in good old Blighty, it's been Olympics, Olympics, Olympics. You probably noticed. But over in the US of A, there has been with interest an unfolding story over the last month of uh, Chick-fil-A restaurants. Yeah, I say Chick-fil-A. It's Chick-fil-A, I know. And, but I prefer Chick-fil-A because it's such a macho name. It's so macho. It's not gay. Yeah, that's right. Gay. <sighs> Which is a bit like the situation going on. Now, in the US of A, um, the head of Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A, has been on the TV or blogging and giving, saying that he gives money to anti-gay um, organizations and this is upset the gay people and they go well we're not going to Chick-fil-A restaurants Chick-fil-A restaurants are just disgraceful and this has led to other people going oh we don't like gays so we'll go to Chick-fil-A restaurants and we'll eat there we're gonna eat there bloody puffs and it's a bit like that it's a bit like that it's been going like that so I have had a bit of it's getting a bit annoying because it's that old Christians hate gays again, isn't it? Why do they hate gays so much? Well, because the Bible says so. The Bible's got the bloody words in, and the Bible says, look, man shall not lie with man. It says so in the Bible. And so the Bible must be right. But of course, the Bible says a lot of other things. The Bible says things like, ooh, um, you shouldn't have tattoos. That's one. Uh, you should never mix fabrics. No, no, no cotton and polyester or whatever it is. You, ah. That's evil. But also, oh God, whatever other things have they got in there? Um, uh, you shouldn't have cut your hair in a bowl cut. You know, one of those bowl cuts with a bowl on top and chopped round. A bum cut, if you like. You shouldn't have that either. Um, other things as well. But um, the fact is, that's the Old Testament. And when you say to somebody, well, you know, don't you read that in the Bible as well? They said, well, no, that's the Old Testament, isn't it? Didn't you know Jesus died for our sins? And we don't have to make sacrifices anymore. Have you noticed? We don't sacrifice chickens, we don't sacrifice goats and all that, which apparently God used to like. But um, don't have to anymore. Why? Well, well, what's happened is God likes sacrificial chicken, of course, and a mutton and goat, but not shellfish. And he came down to earth um, in Holy Spirit form, obviously, as one of his relatives, and sacrificed himself Right, so that clam chowder could eventually end up on the menu. And next to, of course, bacon sandwich and black pudding or something. You know, a good old English breakfast. So it's all, now it's okay to wear uh, a bum cut if you really want one. So it's a bit dubious, but if you want a bum cut, you can have one. If you want a tattoo, you can even have a tattoo with a man, oh gosh, uh, nailed to a piece of, two pieces of wood. You can have that. You can have a tattoo like that. How lovely. And um, you can obviously eat an English breakfast now, and that's why Jesus died. Uh, he died for, uh, it's what makes the Christians, of course, cock a snoot at that evil old bastard that was in the Old Testament. And, um, and of course, dwells in the pages there. <sighs> feel better now. But when it comes to gays, forget it. Gays, fuck them. Yeah, gays, bastards. All bloody puffs bit mean really. I'm just saying more or less what people are saying. I don't think that. I 
don't have a problem, never have had a problem with people doing, as long as there's not a victim, we don't want a victim, as long as there's no victim, people can do what they bloody well want in sex, as long as it's between them. Sometimes with me, but not in a gay sense. Anyway, we won't go into that. But let's go on about this thing, this thing about gays and the bloody Bible, because it pisses me off. And people say, yeah, you thick buggers, you don't know anything, you just quote shellfish at me. Well, yes, I probably know more than you think, actually. If the Old Testament is of no use whatsoever, then why do they keep saying, the Lord is our shepherd, thou shalt not want? Well, what is that bloody well doing in there? That's a psalm, that's Old Testament. And it's cherry picking. It's cherry picking a tiny bit out of the Old Testament. Um, the Jewish book, if you like. So, and on top of that, what's so brilliant about shepherds? Shepherds, okay, they look after their sheep. They look after perhaps goats. Um, they look after their flock. But for what purpose? Only so they can slaughter them instead of the wolf. I mean, they just preserve, they're, the end's the same inevitability. Um, could say it's for wool, but mostly, mostly it's for killing. So shepherds, lords and shepherds, rubbish. But why not pick on other psalms? I mean, you could. Um, I've got some here, actually. Let's pick on another psalm. Why not Psalm 137? And we'll let's quote that in the Christian bloody church. Happy shall they be that taketh and dasheth, dasheth thy little ones against the stones. Bloody great, that one, isn't it? On, or that Psalm 137, by the way. If you want Psalm 58, um, that explains where the wicked are wicked from birth and tell lies before they can even talk, um, as God made them that way. Yeah, never use that one, don't know why. Um, or Psalm 109, uh, where a wicked man's children will be fatherless and his wife, obviously, they're going to kill him, but his wife will be a widow, obviously also, but his children will be punished as beggars um, in the worst places without mercy from those around them. God, what a nice God. Um, or Psalm 135 and 136. Um, and if you read those, God gets praised for slaughtering Egyptian babies and livestock. Good old God. Oh, what a bloody good... But again, that's Old Testament. We shouldn't really be using cherry-picking one piece and not the others. OK, let me get back to you. OK, so let's have a look at, look at gays in the New Testament in that sense. Let's have a look at Luke 17, 34, at least, at least Luke, Luke 17. <clears throat> if you look at this passage, and it's all about the rapture. Oh, we love the rapture, don't they? Um, born agains and all that love the rapture. It's the time to look forward to, when we can all die. Um, the whole world gets raptured. Even though, apparently, he said he'd never do it again after the Noah's Flood. But there you go. God's going to come back and Jesus is going to return and all that crap. But it does say in Luke 17 that a man, a man who's lying with another man in bed, right? There's two of them, obviously. Two gay men. One of them will be saved and one of them will um, not. It also says two women that are, uh, two lesbians anyway, there'll be two lesbians and one will be saved and one will not. And it also says that there's two farmers for some reason. Farmers, one will be saved and one will not. All right, farmers, okay, we'll forget the farmers. But that's a 50-50 chance of being saved um, of these particular ones anyway. So why would God want to save a gay man and a lesbian. You must be really pissed off if you're a narrow way Christian and you've been going through all that all your days and you've never been gay and then a bloody gay gets in and a lesbian. Whoa. You'd be really pissed off, wouldn't you? But it says so. Luke 17, look it up. Um, a 50-50 chance. That's pretty good compared to the rest of us, which is like a 0, 0.000000 recurring a thousand million times. 0.1 chance of getting in. Anyway, if you look at Timothy chapter 2, women are forbidden from teaching and wearing costly jewellery. Well, I don't see any campaigns against women teachers, not even against women religious teachers. There's no campaign, campaigns against that, but it's in there. It's in the New Testament. 
cherry picking is what they are doing and they're cherry picking for bigoted reasons. No other reason. Bigotry. Um, it says there, it also says in uh, Timothy that those that die in childbirth are being punished by God for wrongdoings. That's right. If okay, not so many women now die in childbirth. But if they did, you could go around going, no, she did something wrong. She obviously was punished by God. What prats would you be? Honestly. Uh, it's, I'm not going to carry on. I'm not going to carry on with lots of quotes because it's time to do the final summary of this. It says in the Bible, and it's quoted at me all the time, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Well, whoopee fucking do. That's the Old Testament and it doesn't matter. And it's not true because it's in the Old Testament. So if you're Christian and you're quoting that at me, bollocks to you. Right. And if you want to go around being bigoted, well, that's also up to you. But if people want to go around pointing out how fucking bigoted you are, that is also up to them and that's what I'm doing today and telling you what a bunch of fucking bigoted wankers you all are and that is according to your own rules. Peace. Oh. Yay. It's a cruel world. He's a bit of a bastard the Old Testament God but the thing is why is it that they can do all these things, all these things um, up with the Old Testament in them, keep going on about the Old Testament, they bring it into Christianity all the time, and when it doesn't suit them, like with gay men, they go, mm, sorry, but no, that one, yeah, that's the New Testament. Um, I don't know. Because they, sure. they, they change, they only change things because they want to, they cherry pick. The cherry pick that precisely. they want out and the things they don't want in. They do it to suit themselves. Of course they do. Um, but the thing is, it is done to support bigotry. And it's basically people bigoted because they don't like gay people. Which I think is a bit of a shame because some gay people are quite nice. Although those two gay guys that have run off with my antiques, I'm not too keen on. Mm, no, I'm not either. But they're yeah. not all like that. It's not because they're gay, it's because they're bastards. Give them the benefit of the doubt, because they may turn up with it one day and say, oh, oh, sorry, this belongs to you. Well, obviously, I will then forgive them. Mm. I'm like that. It's like Jesus was. But then again, they might not. Mm, more likely. Mm. Wait till I get all of them, bastards. Yeah. Yeah.